Hey everybody, Rosmatter here, and welcome to part 97 of my Umineko Let's Play. Last episode, just when it seemed like the chips were down, everything had gone bad with Beto and Badler kind of on the edge of defeat with everything being swallowed up, and Angie dealing with the aftermath of learning the truth. Uh, somehow she did make it back to the Golden Land, and now her and Badler are going to be doing like a counterattack. So they are going to be going to where Burn and Featherin are having their big, like, truth reveal party. And they're going to basically, like, invade it, inter like, intercept it, and try and stop them. Uh, so it's good to see that Angie has kind of come around learning, you know, what Badler was trying to tell her. And now they're, like, working together as a team. It's going to be great to see. I love the idea of Angie and Badler, like, being able to fight side by side with each other. Uh, another interesting thing was uh, some sort of, like flash back, flash forward, I don't even know, of uh, the uh, the creation of Hachijo Ikiko, which stands for 18, based on a person that uh, Hachijo picked up, who I'm assuming is Badler, based on some, you know, like the hints given. I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but I'm hoping so. Whoever it was, it's somebody that Hachijo picked up uh, after being, this, you know, the person being on the brink of death. They've lost their memories and uh, trying to retain those memories or, like, remember them hurts them. And it was all memories about Rokunjima, so it, it seems like it's lining up to be Badler. But uh, hopefully we'll find out the answer soon. But we left off with, like, uh, Beato and everybody trying to hold off Erika uh, as, like, a, you know, kind of like a standoff. Like a ceasefire almost, while Badler and Angie and Lambda Delta go to the City of Books to try and stop Burn and uh, and Feather. And so it seems like we're going to be having like kind of a final showdown here. Super excited to see how this goes. So I've rambled on on long enough. Let's go ahead. Let's get back into the story. Nante. <sighs> バカでかい図書館だ。この一冊一冊に私たちのような物語が記されてるんですって。ここは神様の世界だな。After passing through the barrier, the three of them had finally made it inside the city of books. For some time, they were overcome by the countless otherworldly sights before them, but they quickly remembered their original objective. It's like all of these, all the fragments, everything that Badler and Angie had to go through. This is like the final, final boss. Because I assume this will be ending soon. Like, is there going to be anything after the fight with Burn? It's like permadeath is on. Like, this is it. You guys have left your safety of the game board. It's like... You are fighting on a very uneven terrain right now. They're definitely at a disadvantage, but the power of family and love and all that stuff. Love, you know, without love it cannot be seen. Love, love, love. It's been kind of drilled into our heads like I, that will be the thing. It's like love and friendship will overcome everything. Oh, I feel like it's gonna end up in a fight, though. Mom is like, I'm kind of hoping for a fight because she just wants to be entertained. Like, Burn's just gonna let them just run up and grab the book and go away and just run off with it. Badler and Angie nodded to show their understanding. Yeah, 
Okay, so if, as long as they take the key, right? If they take the key, then the book can't be unlocked and no one will know the truth. Lambda Delta pulled her head back from around the corner of a bookshelf. The others hurriedly followed suit. In the distance, they saw emerald green lights floating about and leaving trails. あれはベルの使い魔の猫よ。今日はあちこちを巡回して見張っているわ。私たちが来ることも読まれてる。違うわ。ここは広大だからね。迷子になるアンポンタンな来客を迷子センターにお連れするための<笑> Angie, Angie thinks like me when I play like a stealth game. <laughs> it just, it's all devolves into, I guess I'm fighting now. Too bad we don't have Will with us. Lambda Delta wasn't laughing. Most likely, even this punishment she spoke of was pretty optimistic. Despite saying she won't offer any more help, she's already risking everything. And for what? Lambda Delta brushed her hair back and grinned. Oh, Lambda Delta hugged their heads at the same time, making their foreheads bonk together. Ah, oh, I just love the idea of like Burn wants like that she doesn't want the happy ending, and Lambda Delta does. But she was promised she wanted one for certain. I knew she was on our side. She seemed like she wanted to pretend like she was some sort of, like, neutral third party, but nah, she's invested. She just wants to see these crazy kids have a happy ending after all the shit they've been through. The three of them swam out into the darkness of the deep ocean trench that was the city of books. In that massive, vast trench of bookshelves, they vanished into the darkness almost immediately. She's probably like, she wants to root for the underdogs. I think most people... Instinctively, they after seeing all the suffering they've been through, right? The library defied the common sense of the human world, the city of books. The word city was no exaggeration, and it was filled with the green glowing eyes of Burncastell's countless cat familiars. Trying to count them would be almost as crazy as counting all the fish in the ocean. They formed schools that swam all over the place, on the lookout for any fools who might miraculously have managed to slip in and disturb their master's party. If Battler's group was found, the cats would report it instantly. They would probably form a pack, open their large mouths, and swallow them in a single gulp. There'd be no fight. In this place, Battler's party would be swallowed like tiny fish if they were discovered. The warships surrounding the Golden Land were well more than a hundred strong. Each of them had dozens of cannons pointing at the door to the Golden Land. The goats that packed the decks of the ships numbered in the tens of thousands. Each one of them carried anti-magic toxin in their fangs, potent, potent enough to, to completely deny each of the game board pieces one by one. This time, they would chew apart and eat away everything. The crowd of goats unleashed their rotten breath and dangling drool. At that time, Erica, who wanted to avoid trouble and hoped Beato would be able to convince Lambda Delta to surrender peacefully, was sitting alone, calmly enjoying the tea Ronave had poured for her. Of course, even Erica wasn't planning to give them unlimited time. 
In her mind, she'd already decided to allow them three yawns before stepping in. みんなを説得してるのを眺めるのも。あの短期だったお嬢様がよくそこまで大人になられたものです。何がおかしいの？いいえ、失礼。次の紅茶はいかがです？古今東西あらゆる名茶をどうかごゆっくりお楽しみく
Then the ball-shaped thing burst open, leaving nothing left. It all happened in an instant. I was waiting for her to say that. <laughs> the witch hunters were holding a convention in the event hall. After all, once Ushirimiya Eva's diary was opened, the endless cat box would be lost, along with the countless imagined stories that had entertained them for so long. So this final convention was a time for them to air their best theories one last time. The cat box was soon to be opened, and while that did give them a slightly lonely feeling, they couldn't contain their excitement as intellectual rapists, not when they knew the Rokinjima mystery was finally going to be solved once and for all. This is probably, you know, not too far off from what happened when this game initially came out. People, it's like before they would read the chapters, they'd probably go on message boards and or talk to each other about their theories before they, you know, read the final chapter. There was a girl out there who was going to be hurt by the opening of that box. However, their jaws and fangs couldn't care less. The witch-hunting goat nobles kept licking their lips, wanting to chew apart the guts of Beatrice's cat box as soon as they could. Seated upon a grand throne the size of a pillar, Featherin listened in on the nonsense being spewed from the mouth of the goat nobles. A black cat wearing a cape silently appeared and whispered something into Featherin's ear. <laughs> the cat bowed humbly and vanished. Does she already know that Beato, or Beato, that uh, Angie and Badler are there? Featherin raised her wine glass high and laughed as she looked through it. Uh, through the to the light of the chandelier, which was as beautiful and majestic as the moon. <laughs> so she's saying, like, I'm gonna thank Angie by not, like, having her immediately captured and killed. She's like, yeah, just try and come for me and see what happens. I'll give you this chance. As Badler's group moved forward, darting from bookshelf to bookshelf while avoiding the eyes of the cats, they found something strange. Yeah, Featherin definitely is just like, okay, I know they're there. I'll give her a chance to try and, like, you know, stop me from revealing the truth. Written with a faintly glowing red substance was a letter and an arrow. Hey. Oh no, am I gonna have to solve another puzzle here? <laughs> That's what it looked like to them. Like, he? Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like a little bit too much, too convenient. <laughs> Angie traced the red arrow with her finger. It was written, but with very faint, thin, thin strings that had been twisted together. That's, that's Ava, right? The strings? Sticky red strings that, when touched, melted like cotton candy and clung to the fingers. Yeah! This is where Angie has to have faith that Ava's not luring her into a trap because she's got to trust that Ava wants the best for her. Yeah. Oh, every time she calls Ava mom, it's just like, oh, my heart. In the arbor, the arguments over whether they should surrender or fight continued without signs of stopping. Every now and then, a small fight would break out, which fortunately ended up delaying Erica's third yawn. However, they didn't know how long they'd be able to continue this fake fight. Keeping this high level of tension was uh, going was physically stressful. The instant they tired out and the tension faded, Erica would probably demand a verdict. They had to constantly appear to be trapped and agitated. It was a battle of weariness and tension, 
This was their fight. Erica waited patiently. Now that she had tired of tea, she was watching Ronave perform some magic tricks and seemed to be quite enjoying herself. She's like a child. She's like, I've got my trash TV. I'm just watching this, like, this argument. And I'm also watching some magic tricks. <laughs> the fact that she's wearing that hat certainly doesn't, like, you know, doesn't help with, like, kind of, like, that childish look to her. Even Ronave, who was usually aloof from the world, was fighting. If Erica got bored and lost her patience with them, an all-out attack would probably begin at once. He's, like, moments away from shaking some keys at her. <laughs> Even if he was putting everything he had into the fight to buy time for Battler's group. As the fiercest leader in the arguments, Beato wore out the quickest. She breathed heavily, and her face was so pale it seemed she might faint at any moment. Beato, その感を私たちがつなぐわ。まだ大丈夫であるとも。やるぞ。もう一度大きく騒ごうではないか。行くぞ。さあ誰から行く。一番やりの欲しいものは。ではゴーダ。Look at you, Gota. Character development. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Erica suddenly rose from her chair. Ronave tried to coax her back into her seat, but Erica's attention was completely focused on those arguing under the arbor. Did Gota do something to fuck this up? <laughs> Oh no. Did she like did she catch a um what's the word I'm thinking of? Discrepancy? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, go to yeah. You fucked it up. Did he say like at the beginning I said we must fight, but I was thinking like did he did he say that? He didn't say that, did he? Oh no, Goda. He was trying to help and he ended up potentially just ruining things for everybody. Ah, she, yeah, he did. He was the one who was all, yeah, because I thought that was weird that Goda would be like, I've said from the beginning we should fight. Like, he was the one who was against the fighting. He's. Oh, Goda! You tried, my buddy. Right? Human beings are, are fallible, especially if you're like, you know, worn down. Mm,、he's the only one. Ah. <laughs> An uncomfortable, damp wind blew by. Everyone was silent, frozen as though time had stopped. In that silence, Erica continued with a blank expression. I'm glad Erica actually has a moment to, like, show off her detective skills here instead of just kind of sitting and watching. <laughs> that is possible. Let's go with the first one. Definitely the first one. Okay, 
かわらわたちは必死に今後の運命を議論している時に普段は考えられぬ心変わりがあってもおかしくはない意味もなく議論を延長することに意味があるとすれば時間を稼ぐことあなたたちは時間を稼ぐと何が有利になるのですラムダデルタ教の援軍がやってくるからですかそれも違いますなぜならあなたたちは先ほどから時折ラムダデルタ教の力に話しかけているんですが、oh, no. yeah. I'm surprised that she hasn't それに対する返事が一度たりとも私の耳に聞こえます Maybe she already she had her doubts from the beginning but she was just waiting for somebody to slip up to get a confirmation about that 以上すべてから考えて導き出される推理は一つです That Lady Lambda Delta and Badler are not here now, and that these people have won Lady Lambda Delta's assistance. But Lady Lambda Delta and Badler are probably planning to sneak into the City of Books. In which case, their goal would probably be to steal back the Golden Key and Angie. And your plan was to act as bait and buy time until their mission was complete. <laughs> With a blank yet ruthless expression, Erica spoke these words and returned to her seat. Everyone else was frozen, unable to move. No one spoke. However, time was moving. As evidence, a bead of sweat dripped down someone's cheek, fell, hit the table with a tiny yet audible splat. They're like, let's kill her! <laughs> It's go time. And frozen time shattered, and in the same instant, the white chair Erica had been sitting in broke apart. So here we go. The stakes of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory and the high velocity rounds from the Chester Sisters had obliterated the chair at exactly the same time. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I know, like, I love World Dominator 2. Great song, but this song always gets claimed every time. It's, it's like play, so I'm gonna have to just mute it for this part. I'm so sorry. And a mo few moments after that, the Erica sitting in that chair faded and vanished. Oh shit. All she has to do is uh, go and alert the goats about what's going on and it's all over. In an instant, Erica had moved to a spot behind the chair. Her expression remained as blank as it had been. However, there was now something in her hand that wasn't there before. As the seven lightning strikes of the seven sisters raced at her once more, she batted all of them away with her scythe. I could see her also being proud enough to be like, I don't need to get the goats, I can handle them myself. Erica lifted her left hand, the one that wasn't holding the scythe. Well, never mind. So much for me being like, maybe she won't. Uh, she'll try and take care of it herself. Vern Kestel set the receiver down and crossed out yet another name on a list of Lambda Delta's notable friends. Something was wrong. No one she'd called had heard anything from Lambda Delta. They weren't just playing dumb. They really knew nothing about the strange ruckus Lambda Delta was trying to stir up. Even Burncastel was starting to suspect that something was fishy. Then a black cat leapt in and meowed a frantic report. <laughs> she tore the phone receiver from its stand. The number she dialed was short. It was probably an internal line. However, after listening to it ring several times, She slammed the receiver down again, finally managing to break the phone. I wonder if she was either trying to call Eva or Featherin. 
ギの警護にやった猫たちが誰も応答しないラムダーグオーバーウェルドウィッドエモーションバーンカストキックトゥテーブルオーバー Then the room finally grew bright. It was like green sunlight. A bright green light war、uh, waved about, giving the illusion a green sun was rising and lighting the room up. It was a sign Burncastle's army had been given in emergency summons. What was now an emerald green nebula let out a roar of delight that shook the bookshelf cliff. Nanika got the crew. Nanda, are you a Midorino? Cacrete, Parita, no. Three of them frantically hid behind a bookshelf. The room with the key in it was straight ahead. They could see something glowing faintly in the darkness of that room. The glow different from anything else they'd seen so far in the city. Oh, I wonder if those cats are going to kill Ava Tariche and then she's going to be like, I did this for Angie. The color it glowed was gold. They had almost reached the golden key. However, as they went towards it, Burncastle would be right behind them, along with her vast swarm of familiars. In other words, they were trapped in a dead end. They already knew that the emerald green color came from the eyes of the familiars. However, it was almost beyond comprehension that the undulating green sun could be the same thing, and they could do nothing except stare in wide eyed shock. Countless cats approached. They passed through the ravine of bookshelves from the very top to the very bottom, painstakingly checking the gaps between each book. However, even this mind numbingly huge task was accomplished,、uh, accomplished, <laughs> accomplished swiftly thanks to the sheer number of familiars. It's only a matter of time before they find them. With the speed of a gust of wind, they carefully checked every nook and cranny. There was no way to hide from this green sun. That would have been as foolish as trying to hide from water on a sinking ship. Fadler was just about to leap out from the shadows, but Lambda Delta grabbed him by the collar an instant before. <laughs> Angie and Fadler are very similar in certain ways. They're like, time to fight, let's go. ガギを守る猫がいないわけないでしょ。私たちは挟み撃ちにされたのよ。私は、エバオバさんを信じる。おばさんが私たちをここまで導いてくれた。きっとおばさんは見張りの猫たちもやっつけてくれているはずよ。
あの黄金の鍵を取り囲んでる魔法陣わかるあれは簡単だけどなかなか堅牢な結界よ触れば壊せる簡単な結界だけれどでもねどんな大魔女でも人間風情でも解くのにかっきり1時間をかけるという Another time limit <laughs> This is feeling more and more like an actual video game where it's just like, all right, we got the big boss, we got the mini bosses, which are like the cats, uh, and we have like a time limit of like the barrier. We have to wait for the barrier to come down. ま、法人も壊してくれたに違いないわ。1時間はかからないはず。見る限り、まだ魔法人は健在ね。3年ながらエヴァがそうしてくれたとしても、それは1時間以内の話みたいよ。1時間なんてちょろいもんだぜ。
It really was a stupid, childish game of rock-paper-scissors. Despite promising to start with paper, they threw different signs to catch each other off guard. Both Badler and Angie chose rock. Oh god, they're all gonna get eaten just because they keep picking the same thing because they're two alike. And yet, it wasn't a tie. Oh. Because in addition to those two rocks was one person who chose scissors. Ah, oh, she threw them off! She intentionally was like, I will be the sacrifice. After staring stupidly at their fist and those scissors, they looked at her. She totally planned that, didn't she? He's saying that, but I think she she knew from the get-go what was going to happen. She's the witch of certainty after all, right? There had been no reason for Lambda Delta to join in on the game. This wasn't the time for a joke like that. Badler and Angie, each trying to lose, chose Rock. Lambda Delta alone chose scissors. Lambda Delta made a clenched fist, a fragment glowing pale blue appeared there, and she gave it to the pair of them. Badler had seen one of these before. It was a magic fragment, like the one Erica had used before disappearing, which would allow one to cross the sea of fragments. それがあれば、二人とも黄金鏡に帰れるわ。それに、これが一番の人選なのよ。あんたたちじゃ、ベルンを相手に数秒ともたないだろうし。私なら、一時間どころか、ひょっとしたら勝っちゃうかもね。あ
With a jerk of her chin, Byrne ordered her familiars to attack. Man, not even any hesitation at all. Okay, that's her showing mercy, I guess. Oh, that's pretty cool. The crowd of cats undulated again, reformed into a single mass, and became the emerald green leviathan that would swallow up any poor victims who snuck into the city of books. It was shaped like an impossibly vast whale. However, would it look like a whale from Londa's perspective? You probably couldn't see anything except an amounts, immense mouth about to swallow up everything. <laughs> She's like, lucky for you, I'm into that! <laughs> <laughs> However, Lambda Delta's war cry was swallowed up by the glowing, writhing Leviathan in a single bite. The same instant Lambda Delta was swallowed and Burncastle was sure of her victory, the latter felt a slight breeze playing with her hair. The countless sweets Lambda Delta had sent flying like fireworks and which drifted about like the decorations at a Christmas party were flowing. No, they were converging on a single point. It was like watching a firework run backwards. Countless sweets rapidly contracting to somewhere within the vast, closed mouth of the Leviathan. The gigantic reverse explosion gathering at a single inner point. Or perhaps it was more like countless candies showering the Leviathan from all directions like bullets. Inside the massive green was a black swirl. That swirl was on a palm. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad Lambda Delta got her own, like, cool CG on the palm of Lambda Delta, who wore a defiant smile. It was a mass of super-concentrated gravity. All the sweets, the cats, the whale, and everything else was being sucked into that one point and crunched. All the candies Lambda Delta had scattered were getting sucked back into the black hole on her palm at unbelievable speeds. The pressure of the reverse candy explosion whittled away at the Leviathan, crushing it inwards. With all her strength, Burncastel held her ground in midair, trying to resist the supergravity. For the first time, all trace of condensation had left her face. Even Lambda Delta's cocky expression was marred by the sweat trailing from her forehead. Because their power was so overwhelming, any victory would have to be instantaneous. If either relaxed in the slightest, they would match each other's strengths and get uh, dragged into another dizzyingly long fight that could last for centuries. I mean, hey, that's... We only need an hour, that's fine. <laughs> neither of them had any desire to go through that again. So, neither of them showed the slightest mercy for their most beloved friend. By now, the Leviathan had been completely crushed and compressed inside the black hole. Burncastle was the only one still holding her ground. However, a windstorm of candy asteroids like an asteroid belt repeatedly slammed into Burncastle, wearing away her girl form bit by bit. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping that, like, it was going to be Angie and, uh, and Badler versus Burncastle. I mean, she could still win this. 
Lambda Delta could lose, but maybe Featherin will be the true final boss. Next thing to fly into Burncastle's range of vision was a comet hurtling straight for her with a massive present box at its core and a cloud of candy surrounding it. Man, they really went all out for this last little bit. All these, like, cool little effects and everything. The Candy Comet wiped out Burnkestel along with her sleep, uh, with her scream. It burst into little bits. Then, within the blink of an eye, it was sucked back into a hole of super gravity. Is that it? She's, she's finished? The battle's won? Seems too easy. Once it was all gathered in one place like a gem, it began to spin rapidly. It was flattened by the centra... Oh gosh, centrifugal force. I've said that wrong. I know I have. <laughs> Turning into something whose shape resembled a galaxy. After swallowing all the cats and their master, it now looked like a winding, flickering, emerald green galaxy that floated just above Lambda Delta's palm. The pocket of supergravity kept compressing it further and further. Until, at the end, it had become a single green shining. Kompetu. I'm I'm gonna look up what that what that candy, how you pronounce that. <laughs> Then it fell down onto her outstretched palm. That's it. That's it. I feel like it's not quite over yet. Maybe Bird will come up with some sort of like secret attack and be able to get out of this. Lambda Delta. All right, I looked it up because I'm probably driving all of you guys crazy. So uh, I believe it's Compito. Lambda Delta held the Compito above her head and peered at it. God, it's like Goku in Dragon Ball Z. She's like, I was just, I was holding back. <laughs> Let me show you my true strength. Then she pressed the Compito to her pink lips, gave it a light kiss, and bit down. Oh, now you'll be part of me forever. Oh, I said, I, like, I knew it. I knew it was too easy. Lambda Delta licked her fingertips, then turned to face the empty air behind her. It's just turned into a lover's quarrel now. Feels very personal. That's right, you two just keep monologuing. That's great. Give us more time. The crash crack lines appeared across the sky of the Golden Land. Oh yeah, there's that whole thing going on at the Golden Land with all of the uh, the ships and everything. And finally, the barrier of the Golden Land was breached by the fleet's assault. It was a bizarre scene, more ridiculous than anything anyone had imagined. The sky of the Golden Land shattered like glass, and a fleet of sailboats flew in, one after the other. They were crowded with goats pushing each other and spilling off the sides. Definitely an action-packed episode compared to the past couple. This is the final push right now. Banquet. That wasn't some fancy metaphor, but a simple state of fact. The overwhelming surge of goat troops came in like a tsunami. 
The residents of the Golden Land who stood defiantly were like a forgotten sandcastle on a beach. Fight between a wave and a sandcastle is not a fight. For the voracious, merciless goats now storming the food at a standing buffet, this was a feast. All those who could use magic fired it off at once. With a shout like a thunderclap, the goat tsunami rushed forward. Everything collided at once, and there was a brilliant and terrible explosion. All because Gota... This is all Gota's fault. <laughs> Sparks and smoke, flying splinters and screams. For just an instant, the fierce magical cannonballs fired by Beato, Virgilia, and the Chiester sisters seemed to halt the goat tsunami in its tracks. However, their numbers were so great that they didn't even flinch. The goat wave pressed forward over the corpses of those who had been blasted away or fallen to their knees in weariness. A mound of corpses piled up, and still more goats were shot down as they tried to cross it. So that before long, it really was tall enough to be a tsunami. Beato lifted her hands, telling the pair of battle towers that had been hidden deep in the ground the Day of Glory had come again. Oh man, flashbacks to what was this? This is the battle against Virgalia? Like way, way back in what, like chapter 3 or something? The goat tsunami looked up at it in shock. After all, this time, the tsunami that towered over everything wasn't them. A thunderstorm of rapid-fire ballista rounds rained down from the battle tower gun ports. The goats let out a confused scream at the furious tempest that was bearing down on them. However, they saw something else, too. What did that say? Smothered mates? I didn't catch it in time. Whoa, what the f- <laughs> They- oh my gosh, like... Yes, okay, this is so cool. In the sky, high above the tower, was a reaper astride a divine horse and backdropped by the moon, with a massive spear the size of a tower in its hand. The next words came not from the reaper, but from the great witch seated behind it. The heavenly spear pierced the ground. For an instant, it looked like some divine tower was sticking out of the ground. However, that was the very last thing those eyes ever saw. The sacred spear was the embodiment of heaven's wrath, and the strength to bury an unhallowed city in a single stroke was unleashed upon the pack of goats. With a massive explosion that resembled a volcanic eruption, goats were sent flying all over the place. <laughs> And then these guys just have guns. <笑>敵はまだまだ来るわ。やっぱり飲み込まれるのは私たちなのよ。ミシちゃん、あんたたちは楽しそうだわ。うははははは。祭りは楽しまねばそんということだ。どうやら我らの出番がなくなるということはな
that Erica's scythe? On top of the other battle tower, Erica stood gracefully, wielding her scythe. ファンタジーの砂の城。楽しかったですよ。魔法ごっこ。なんだかお Erica threw the pretentious pirate hat she'd been wearing this whole time into the sky. When the moon, with the moon behind it, Erica's form, her after image, vanished from the tower's peak. Shaking with a wild, joyous laughter, Erica dashed straight down the other side of the tower. She twirled her scythe like a gymnast's baton, dicing up the wall, gun ports, pillars, and everything else as she ran, leaving a trail of smoke behind her. Though from the sidelines, it looked as though a line of smoke had suddenly split the tower from top to bottom. The golden arrows of the Chester sisters chased after Erica like golden threads in a sewing machine. Even the golden arrows couldn't catch up with Erica. Finally, Erica reached the bottom of the battle tower, and the golden bows ejected empty cartridges. Erica, who had now landed on the ground, slowly stood up and tapped the tower behind her with the handle of the scythe. Well, so much for that. <laughs> That tiny tap caught the final string that held the tower together, and the whole thing fell in on itself with an earth-shattering crash. Once again, the dark tsunami rumbled forward through the rubble and smoke. <laughs> The goat tsunami swallowed everything up. When she saw them sink under the black tower of goats, Erica guffawed from atop the debris of the tower. Alright. Man, the music just is getting more and more epic. Angie's choice. Ava had indeed broken the magic circle around the key beforehand. By the time Badler and Angie reached it, it was crumbling like the sand in an hourglass. They tried punching and kicking it to make it break faster, but nothing they did hastened the process. <laughs> Judging by the speed the magic circles were crumbling and the general appearance of the whole scene, it looked like it would be over soon. However, as things stood, even if it was just five more minutes, would that be soon enough? They turned around. 
Beyond the bookshop ravine was a universe. Even for Badler, who had seen Beato's fights many time over, the battle between Lambda Delta and Burncastle was so mind-defying that he couldn't think of a single word to describe it. When he finally managed to find the word, it was a universe. With each development in the battle between Lambda Delta and Burncastle, a universe was created between the pair of them. A big Bang took place. A universe was created. Galaxies beyond number were born and erased. Born and erased. Then, just when it seemed a big crunch had occurred, and the universe had met its demise, there was another Big Bang, and another universe was created. It was like watching gods playing. The two witches created and destroyed worlds over and over again, almost as though two creators were fighting to prove that their universe was the right one. You let your guard down in the slightest, and just watching this would steal your soul. That's how it felt. Well, hopefully there will be a golden land to go back to at this point. Of course, Badler. Such a gentleman. <laughs> well, she's like, well... She's gonna like, are you gonna leave me on my own? Perfect balance maintained by two great powers can easily break by adding even a little strength to one side. However, actually rushing in there to add that little bit of strength would be literally suicidal. Like a moth flying into a furnace. It might burn up before it even reaches it. エンジェはすぐに黄金郷へ飛んで帰れ。Ooh, I wonder if Angie's choice is going to be to go back to the Golden Land or stay with Battler and fight. <laughs> Angie had no words to respond with. Her brother and everyone else would probably die. So she wanted to die in the same place at the same time as everyone else. However, that would not be permitted, and she knew she mustn't wish for it. She'd already made up her mind. She had sworn to live in the future without turning back to look at everyone's deaths. Alright, there's the two doors. The, the decision is coming up soon. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> oh, ネコバコの中に閉ざされる。ネコバコに閉ざされた運命は。無限の真実を持つ。そういうことだ。俺たちは暴力層に負けたかもしれねえし、奇跡の大逆転で生き残るかもしれねえ。つまり、お前という未来の魔女に、俺たちの決着を観測させずに未来に送り出せれば、俺
俺はラムダデルタを助けに行くのさその俺の勇姿を見送って黄金鏡に帰ればそれがお前の中での He's like, he's like, let, let me go off like a cool brother. Like, let me, let that be the last thing you see. いいか。忘れるなよ。よく心に刻んとけよ。いつ行かなる時もな。生きる希望を捨てるんじゃねえぜ。俺たちはいつだってみんな。お前の後ろにいるんだ。お前が信じてさえくれりゃ。声だってか
Ern Castell kept coughing and spitting up exploding fireworks. The birth of a small universe from that suite had hit her directly from the inside of her stomach. Oh, it's like the worst acid burn ever. <laughs> Even Burncastel couldn't with, uh, withstand that. As she repeatedly vomited fireworks so violently that it seemed her guts would spill out. Her body flickered in and out of existence. And she glared at Lambda Delta with a terrifying expression. Her body was flickering because she'd taken so much damage that even maintaining her form was now difficult. あんたと Alright guys, that will do it for this episode. I'm sorry it's a little bit shorter this week, uh, so I did play on a little bit further, uh, but... For those of you who do know what's going to be coming up, yeah, there's a big battle happening and there wasn't really a great place for me to kind of stop it. So I figured I would try and have as much of that battle in one episode as possible just to make it more coherent and, uh, you know, keep the hype train going on it. Uh, and those of you who haven't read Umineko, it's a good time. Promise you coming up. Not to say that there wasn't any awesome stuff in this episode either. The big battle between Lambda Delta and Burn Kestel was pretty epic. Uh, the whole moment with Badler and Angie, like, wanting to be the sacrifice and then Badler, you know, willing to stay behind so Angie can bring the key to Beato. The whole thing, once again, about the doors being opened. The obvious choice being the door to Angie's future. Uh, so that choice is going to be coming up. But like I said, we do have uh, the big battle uh, of the Golden Land is going to be in the next episode. I've only played a little bit so far, and it's just, it's so epic from what I've played, and I can't wait to finish it off. And I hope you guys are hyped for it. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and stay tuned next week for part 98. Until then, bye guys. Special shoutouts to my top tier patrons. Kaori Makoto, SM, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Jared Fan, Joel Ustman, Zorn Ether, and Poxy.